Hi, this is Dr. Stephen Smith, and today we're talking about MTHFR anomalies, both heterozygous and homozygous. These are important because they are in the pathway that called the methylation pathway. Shown here is a highway rather than a complex biochemical diagram. And one of the products of this pathway is glutathione. Glutathione is important because if you have low glutathione, you're likely to get a number of chronic illnesses, including fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, migraines, cancer, chronic fatigue, allergy, depression, heart disease, and the list goes on. <clears throat> So there are several uh, types of MTHFR anomalies. They're categorized as heterozygous and homozygous, and we're going to go over the difference. First, we're going to show you the heterozygous. That means you've just got one normal gene and one affected gene. This could be the 677 or the 1298, which are the two that we measure out of the sort of 50 MTHFR enzymes that there are. So this means that you've got one from one parent. And in my diagram here, you see a, a narrowing of the pathway or the highway. Think of this as a three-lane highway. Well, now one lane is permanently closed. So that's going to reduce the effectiveness of this pathway uh, by about 30%. If you have homozygous, that means you've got one gene from your mom and one gene from your dad then the pathway can really be compromised maybe as little as 10 percent to 20 or 30 percent is the max or you could have another um, pathway called compound heterozygous which you have two blocks but at different places and this is actually usually the worst combination this pathway efficiency maybe as little as 10 percent all of these result in low glutathione, and very rarely we see a homozygous with a heterozygous uh, at a different spot. These are very rare. So um, anyway, the end result of this is that glutathione is depleted. And over a lifetime, this can cause a lot of problems because toxins build up. So, and we have very little defense system. So we have a higher toxic load creating more oxidative stress and less glutathione to protect us. So we have some kind of event that will usually trigger the onset of a chronic illness. So what do we do about this? Well, we can't change our genetics, and, but we can add, do something about it. So let me get this off and that off. So over here we have B12. This is what you usually measure at the laboratory. This will usually be high in people with MTHFR because they just can't convert it. Then we, this enzyme converts this by adding the folic acid in here and making methyl B12, which is used to make glutathione. So we can add methyl B12 to the, by a subcutaneous injection or taking it sublingually. It doesn't work very well orally and the injection form is much more effective than the sublingual form. We can also add L-methylfolate in here. This is a medical food known as Deplin, Medinex, or a couple of examples and there are a few supplements that have this. Although most of the supplements that can claim they have active folate do not have active folate. Their folic acid is on the wrong side of the enzyme. So if you have this problem, you want to, first of all, know that you have it so you can get the MTHFR test done. It's a genetic test. It costs about $150 at some labs up to about $350. You can also measure glutathione levels. This is a little bit more esoteric test, but it can be obtained. The cost is about $150 or so. And with these two pieces of information, if you have this anomaly, then you can perhaps get a prescription for methyl B12 shots or take the Deplin and start raising glutathione. And this is going to help with a multitude of chronic illnesses. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much.